Oh, hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, it's looking a lot nicer around here lately. I don't know what it is. My, maybe it's a new year. Uh, maybe it's the fact we got the holidays behind us. I'm starting to feel better. But uh, I'm getting renewed enthusiasm for a couple of the X books. Today we're going to talk about New Mutants and X Force, both of which I liked. And I think. I've cracked the secret of how you need to read this Dawn of X stuff. And that secret is, ignore the terrible books and concentrate on the good ones. Not such a big secret after all. Hey, welcome back to the show. You know, uh, maybe it really is uh, pretty obvious, but for Dawn of X and, and the new X books in general, they're not all created equal. One, they're not all that important to read to understand the continuity of what's going on. This Dawn of X, or Yawn of X, as I've been thinking of it, uh, is not really a tight crossover where you've got to read every part of every book in order, even though they sort of try to imply that it might be. Um, today we're going to talk about New Mutants number 5 and X-Force number 5, both of which I liked. Now, Excalibur number five also came out this week, but I didn't read it. I took it off my list. Uh, why is that? It, 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 you don't just, I'm not just going to read every single book. I have not enjoyed Excalibur really almost at all. I thought the art was okay. And where I like some of the characters that they're using there, um, that's just not enough for me to buy a book. You know, when I... When, I've always said this about comic book readers is that there's different kinds and sometimes you go through different phases of of uh, why you read which books, right? And in the beginning, uh, for myself, when I started reading, it was because of characters. I was a, a really young and I liked Batman. And I liked Spider-Man. So I wanted to read about those characters. And then as you start reading those comics, you quickly realize that not all those stories are created equal. Some were way better than others, and you start to gravitate towards different artists when you really like the art style is the first thing that grabs you. But then as you progress, you start thinking about the writers and the stories and the and the combinations of artists and writers that make up the very best comics. And that's when you sort of uh, uh, move a, into a different level of reading comics, if you will, where it's more about the creators and the creative team. And that's sort of the angle that I always try to approach things from. So anyway, I could talk about these books for a long time, and we will, but let's talk about them in the Million Dollar Comics Cam. Great, New Mutants, uh, X-Force. Let's talk about them. Let's start with, uh, well, the reading order says we should read uh, New Mutants first, so let's talk about it. <clears throat> We're back to Hickman writing and Rod Rice artwork, which I really enjoy. This is a solid looking and reading book, as opposed to the last couple issues of New Mutants that were really just fillers and some of the crappiest looking and written filler issues in the entire Dawn of X series. It really sullies this New Mutant series a little bit. I wish instead of cramming in f crappy filler stories, they would just um, put out less issues. We don't need extra issues if they're going to be crappy. Anyway, um, so this is back, if you remember a few issues ago, uh, the New Mutants went to outer space and they're mixing it up with the Shi'ar. I didn't realize that Cannonball, Sam Guthrie, was married to the new Smasher uh, from the Shi'ar Imperial Guard, but uh, he is, and in fact, they've got a kid. And... Uh, all of this narration, by the way, you're going to notice a lot of talk, a lot of narration. This is unusual in modern comics. This is a unusually densely written comic, and this is sort of what Hickman has talked about. He's trying to get back to a, a denser reading experience per issue. I'm in favor of that, but just leave out the filler between. Um, so this talks about the political situation of the Shi'ar Empire, how there's varying uh, dueling factions and how Warbird is is coming back and and, and uh, is uh, is going to be the ruler of the empire again and how Bobby is just obsessed with her thinks she's beautiful 
because she's bird like and he's Brazilian or something like that. <clears throat> uh, endangered birds, right? Uh, so uh, he's really obsessed with her and he's trying to hit on her throughout the issue, which, depending on uh, uh, your, uh, your, uh, if you're a fan of Hickman's kind of comedy or not, you will like or hate this book. I like it. I think he writes it pretty well. He knows these characters pretty well. He's got an interesting take on it. There's kooky, low-key moments of comedy, but then lots of high space drama and fighting and punching too. So let's keep going. Um, the We see that there's clearly divided factions uh, and and um, what's her name? Essentially, it's Dream Girl uh, is, is kind of playing two sides. She's advising... Uh, gladiator but at the same time she's talking out of both sides of her mouth and she's really wants to have warbird assassinated and enter the shyar death commandos as far as i know this is a completely all new um team uh created by hickman for this and what's kind of cool is we get this picture of all of them it's like wow there's a lot of them this is very hickman like right to not pile bring one thing on but just pile concept after concept and we've got a two-page text piece here that is pretty dense and is one of those text pieces that i like because it, it literally goes through each of these characters that we see here and gives us sort of a a little bit of a breakdown of who they are and what their powers are there's some pretty interesting ones and you can have fun reading them and trying to match up who is who some are obvious some are less so obvious um I really like, you know, the commander, this guy, the black cloak. Uh, and then this ha part Shire, part, part scroll guy, Flaw. Very interesting uh, character. Um, and and you can go through, I'm not going to read all of these. But some interesting stuff. This, this bird guy, Crate, I think he's cool looking. And uh, this harkens back to the day. This is like a little bit of like reading the um, Guardian story. Uh, the Shire Imperial Guard entries in the Marvel Universe and a uh, handbook to the Marvel Universe, right? I like putting that stuff into the book and adding. Just it took long, a, a while to read this stuff. It was interesting and fun to read and added a lot of color. A lot of this you would normally, uh, you know, break down over the course of however many issues and figuring out their powers and their origins and stuff, but we're going to make it denser. I like it. Um, meanwhile, back on... Uh, a, a, a day later, um, Chamber and Mondo are like hanging out and just talking sort of about whether they like um, the new mutants or not. And they're like, well, I like the girls except for Magic because she's kind of, she's crazy. And the dudes, I could take or leave them, especially that Doug, that kid's up to something. Oh, hey, look, Stargate. I've been saying it since the beginning with Don of X. There's something we don't know that's going on with Doug Ramsey. I think this is another hint towards that. They sort of like, uh, there, there's some, there is something going on with Doug Ramsey, right? And in this, um, they make pretty good use of, uh, of his powers in here as he's able to like uh, intercept encrypted Shire trans transmissions and just kind of like understand them automatically. I think that's a really cool... Um, one of the really cool applications of Cypher's powers. Um, this is where uh, Sunspot decides to go hit on um, Deathbird. And it actually plays out pretty interesting. They're both kind of like really rich. And he's like, oh, it's refreshing that you don't just uh, like me for my looks. Meanwhile, uh, the Shire Death Brigade uh, is being called into action and... and uh, uh, Doug Ramsey's able to like figure that out that they're coming to kill them and so instantaneously Magic just says look if this is a a fight this isn't a fight it's a battle which means I'm in charge right because she's one of the captains she's the captain of this the New Mutants team there's the multi different captains and Cyclops is the captain commander so anyway when the teams go out when they go into official battle they have one person who can take charge and tell them what to do in the battle, in the heat of battle. I think that's a pretty cool idea, and, and it plays out really well here, and she's a good choice for that. She's fairly bloodthirsty. Um, and since they're fighting aliens, she's excited because uh, they're not allowed to kill humans, but there's nothing that says they can't kill kill themselves some aliens. 
So anyway, she starts barking out orders. She tells Magic to go tell Mondo and Chamber to come uh, to the loading bay and help out. And and they're up here and they're like, do you really want to go? It's like, How about if we just sit here and drink space drinks? And they're like, yeah, okay. And I think this is interesting because it sort of points out there's dissent, there's kind of dissension in the ranks, the sort of decadence of the new um, X-Men, Krakoan kind of philosophy may not be like fit very well with the military discipline of a field team that needs to go into battle, right? So they just basically, they're like, you know, I don't really want to go fight. Let's drink. Um Meanwhile, we get to see now the Death Brigade encounter the New Mutants, and and they're the the New Mutants are tough, man. They're able to pretty dispatch these guys pretty easily. Magic's like, oh, they're not human. Great, I can kill all of you. Um, and the rest of the New Mutants, you know, we get to see them in battle here. We get to see Karma. I like this Karma. Punch yourself. Punch yourself. You. But as I remember, I thought Karma possessed people, not controlled their mind and told them what to do in this they've got her doing telepathy and 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 not like taking control of the consciousness of it is that a change in her powers or is that just a little bit of loosey-goosey sloppy writing i don't know you tell me in the comments meanwhile so we got a standard space battle but this is fun stuff right this is new mutants who are now they're not the new mutants or the old new mutants right they've had they've been around the block they've had a lot of fights they know how to work as a unit they know they're they're quite powerful and they know how to uh, use those powers so they're able to dispatch with the Shire Guard but meanwhile the Black Watch have got you know a whole ship here and all kinds of weapons and so they blow out a piece of it and oh Mondo and Chamber I guess they sh maybe should have done what they said anyway because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and now they're in outer space but as I've said before and I'll say again who cares right because uh you can't die anymore in the x-men and uh so next boom um but let's move straight into x-force and we're going to talk a little bit more about this new this uh no uh dying situation right so uh x-force number five um when last we met the the, the x-men were being attacked uh, by an, yet another group on the island and the X-Force has banded together to be like the, the CIA of the X-Men is how they're pitching it. But I don't know. They're Homeland Security plus whatever else they got to do. At the la end of our last issue, Wolverine got cut in half and Quentin Quire's head got cut off. So we thought, okay, but the, like the, what a dramatic ending, right? But no, because they can't die. So who cares? I, I, I'll say it again no stakes considerably less drama you can't have a cliffhanger ending where oh my gosh is quentin choir dead no is wolverine dead no we've had three times now wolverine's been dead and and brought and come back so we didn't care Tur well, well we'll see what happens here anyway quentin's dead wolverine's cut in half and uh domino didn't make it through she didn't go through so she didn't get killed and uh but she's ready to settle the score with these dudes because these dudes are sent by the people that tortured her and flayed her tore her skin off and used that as like the skeleton key to get into krakoa i mean i'll say this x-men they they have all kinds of healers and everything else they could even just clone her again and put her mind dump it into a new body so i don't understand why she has to now be scarred for life or does she i don't know um so X Force issue five, Necessary Force. I really like the art in this one as well. I like the density of the storytelling. Uh, this one's by Benjamin Percy and Joshua Kassara. Um, I feel like this is one of the better books. I I'm feeling like the books you need to read, or I need to read anyway. The books I'm gonna read, let's say this uh, right now: X Men, New Mutants, and X Force. I have ditched Excalibur and. Uh, um, fallen angels and 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 uh, we, uh, another one too. I'll read the new stuff as it comes out and determine on a book by book basis. Anyway, um, 
we get to see uh, what Gateway is off on some kind of dream quest, not accessible right now. We get a huge text piece here about Black Tom Cassidy, about how he's sort of mer he's he's like sort of an earth empath plant empath right so all the flora of the island he's in sort of communication with and he can sense things through the plankton in the water and the um stuff in the trees you know the the rustling of the wind and in the the leaves and whatever and uh so I'm not sure why. He's not in this book at all, but they talk a lot about him. He's important to the book, obviously, but we have yet to see how that's going to play out. And what we are going to see here is that Forge has taken to this Krakoan bi uh, um, biological technology stuff and has started making weapons for himself. He's made himself a full like exoskeleton out of that tech. And they're coming to go help Wolverine, who, as we probably, you might have guessed, even cutting him in half. Why? That doesn't, that's not going to kill Wolverine. So his torso is still, like, wreaking havoc over there, which I like. Turns out these mercenaries are being sent to steal this biotech, some of this biotech from the island. Uh, and here comes the team to the rescue. Oh, they and they had sealed off the gateway, so they had to get... Uh, sealed off the Krakoan gateway so they had to get gateway the mutant to teleport them there and uh, Domino has got this biotech arm thing that they basically just say oh it can be whatever you want it to be just imagine it so that's basically how how that works you can turn it into different stuff and okay it's fun it's it is what it is I think this Krakoan technology they're giving it so much like I don't know. It, it's it's all things to all men. Let's put and women. So uh, I'm just not sure how that how interesting that is. Uh, so anyway, uh, we we get a nice big bloody battle, and that's really what X Force is all about, right? X Force is the action book. New Mutants is the comedy space drama family team book, I guess. Uh, and X-Force is all about the action. So uh, in this one, you know, everybody's a badass and, and Domino wants revenge and Forge is building biological Gatling guns. And, uh, you know, and they go and Domino's ready to just waste these guys. And he's like, she, she's like, oh, they're just, they're just like clones anyway. They're just like these constructed guys. And this guy's like, no, I'm a real person. I'm just a mercenary. I'm just doing this for the money. I don't really care. I don't hate mutants, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, uh, Beast is like, okay, it's fine to brutalize them. Just like, keep it within reason. A little bit weird. Um, anyway, uh, when we get to, towards the end here and they're like, oh, how's Quentin? Oh, he's breaking in the oven. He's baking in the oven right now. I'm, I'm sure he'll come out o overdone. Right. So they're like, they're, he's being reincarnated. And, uh, just like all these guys, they're like, there is no stakes, right? Nobody dies. So I really feel, um, I've said it before, I'm saying it again, that's got to change or X-Men is just not that interesting if nobody can die. Um, and th so they've got one of these guys and they're they're holding them in place and they're trying to interrogate him. And finally we get around to the fact that then he's just a merc for hire and that they were hired by who? I don't know who he was, but he was the man with the peacock tattoo. And that's the guy who would torture Domino and everything else. So is that a big revelation? Meh. And then we've got an explanation of who these guys are. The the the, the mercs, right? Finally, we've got uh, next. A beast is born. Okay, I liked one of these books better than the other. I thought X-Force is okay. It's reasonable. I'm going to continue reading it for maybe at least another issue or two uh, to see where it's going. New Mutants, I'm on board. Hickman's X-Men and New Mutants are the core essential one. Right now, X-Force is hanging on by a thread. Um, 
but let me know what you think. You know, guys, I know I've been slowing down on videos and and uh, over the holidays I got sick and everything else, but I want to thank you folks who've uh, kept watching and commenting on the videos. I love doing this. 2020 is going to be an exciting year here at Comic Book News. I've got some uh, uh, tweaks to some of the elements of the show planned coming up. I can't wait for you to see them and, and hear what you think about them. So please, thanks. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching.